Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Did you catch my uh, propaganda uh, <laughs> transmission going by? Yeah, there? We, we just missed that on the podcast, yeah. man. That was that was kind of ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It just started happening. Like, um, I guess it's around this time. Let's see what time is it. Uh, yeah, I think it was about well, this time yesterday yeah, that I, I first noticed it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's somebody driving by and it's it like suddenly for a moment, it feels like you're in North Korea that there's somebody driving by like transmitting something really loud, <laughs> like really clear, like voices. Yeah. Although I couldn't understand what they were saying, which yeah. is why I which thought Korea. It, it really <laughs> didn't like sound like music either. No, no, no. Like, yeah, because it's, it's it's like a speech of some kind. Yeah, it's like somebody's just driving around blasting some speech, which I pictured we couldn't see the vehicle. So yeah. I picture in my head this car with like all these bullhorns attached to right. it, like driving around just blasting this propaganda. I yeah. don't know. Oh, you owe your allegiance to the great leader, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, yeah, so that's what weird. I think too. I don't know what the, I don't know what that's all about. And maybe I'll try and oh no, I'm gonna catch it out when you're out. Yeah, yeah. Um, someday next week, maybe I'll just like go sit on the porch around uh, twenty till six and see, <laughs> see if, if I can, can catch, catch this em. going by. Uh, figure out what it is. Yeah, I'm sure it's just somebody with a car listening to something. Maybe like a death old man or something. Yeah. listening to some kind or of or somebody in like a jeep or something where it's oh, yeah. open. Yeah. I, I don't know. But it's weird. But it's weird. It definitely <laughs> painted a picture in my head. I'll put yeah. it that way. It's like, all right, we're there. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Our worst nightmares have came true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what do you want to start with here? We, yeah. I don't know. I mean, we don't have we don't have so much. I've been distracted. Uh, admittedly, yeah. I, I've been distracted. So. Yeah. Um, I'm always distracted, so there's that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, one of us has to be more focused in the future. Yeah. I, I've got a few things. Um, we can talk... Bre- I mean, like, the big news, I guess, is still the debt stuff. Yeah. There's, they've come to an agreement. It, it sounds like it. Know, it um, anytime there should be a signing by... by I forgot the president's well, yeah, name. Biden. <laughs> Biden, yeah. Yeah, you got the same thing he's got. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> um, I... Has it been through the House? I think it has got, to be signed by the House. I think first. it's been through both chambers, if I'm not oh. mistaken. Okay. Um, my understanding was all we were waiting for was the for him to sign it, and it like I mean I I see no reason why oh, he wouldn't. Yeah. No. He. I mean yeah. he, he agreed. Yeah. Um. A few things about it. I know that they're spending uh 860 billion dollars on in just in the NDAA portion. The yeah. Uh, just Department of Defense. Wow. So that doesn't include nukes, which are under the Department of Energy, I believe. <laughs> That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. And it doesn't include like VA costs and so forth okay. either. Yeah. So probably realistically on the military in this, and let me be really clear. Yeah. I'm not saying we should take money away from the VA. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Never. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, I, I think the answer to that problem is stop making them. Yeah, if stop you want if you want to if you want to save money on that department, <laughs> like stop making more of them. Yeah, like really um, simple solution. <clears throat> but uh, it, it means that the the real cost of the military, um, on the the budgeted cost of the military is something like one and a half trillion. I'm going to make a shirt that says "Defund the Department of Energy." <laughs> Oh, fun! <laughs> All right, like, that just came to mind. Like when, like when you mentioned that, it's like, wow! I'd never like, cons- I never, I didn't know that. That's new news to me. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, yeah, defund the Department of Energy <laughs> before I make the shirt. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm pretty sure like a lot of the uh, the um, it may not be all, but a, a lot of the nuclear. I mean, it would make sense. Like, I can, I, I can believe that. Like, I mean, it, it seems, yeah, seems right. That's what's in my head. It's not like I didn't look that up before we came in here, but that, yeah, that seems to be know. prior knowledge. I only have so many, so much room for notes. The rest of it's off the top of the head. We don't have a <laughs> script for this. You guys all understand that. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. We didn't. We weren't exactly sure even where we were going to start. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the the other important point I think I mean we we know how this goes this go, it goes the same way as any other budget um, in the country where uh, in public they're like arguing with each other and blaming each other and 
Um, I mean, the Democrats and the Republicans, of course. Well, in the meantime, what's happening is that the leadership of both parties goes behind closed doors, makes some agreement. They bring it out. Everybody has to sign it within two days of them putting out. Nobody has read it. And everybody gets what they want. Yep. I mean, that's that's how the games play. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the spending always goes up, never goes down. And, uh, and apparently yeah. now that if I'm understanding this correctly, like it doesn't really matter. Like, cause my understanding of this is that they're just suspending the debt ceiling yeah, and that they're not that's, actually that's raising it. So, which that's like a new low for them because, <laughs> <laughs> because normally they at least like, sounds like a new high or maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe because yeah, normally what they do is they, they kind of guess to where they're going to hit and extend it to that, you know? Yeah. And, so that they can plan to uh, fight again later. Yeah. Um, so now, closer to an election. Yeah, exactly. And this time it's been put off past the election. It has. So, uh, I mean, there's like, that's not insignificant. Yeah. Um, but not surprising either. I mean, that's the, I mean, I think well, honestly, it is a little bit for the Republicans, I uh, think. Yeah. Like, I think wouldn't both, you want to have that fight again right before the election? I don't think they do. Um, well, obviously they don't. Yeah. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't think it's beneficial to them. I think that they look at this as just something that, uh, just another roadblock, yeah. especially when you've got Trump out there saying, well, let it default. Like your establishment, um, Republicans don't want to have that message out oh, there. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, like that ain't good. <laughs> so, well, the whole thing's kind of absurd anyway. I um, I pulled the total numbers and um, at like best available figures. Um, I think for the gross national product, it's for last quarter, and um, I pulled the debt information off of the debt clock. Yeah which is pretty accurate, I think, like in terms of being up to date. Yeah. And uh, the U.S. gross national product is $26.59 trillion. And the current U.S. debt is $31.82 trillion. So if every single dollar that was generated in this country through production, yeah. um, if every single dollar that was generated in the next year was paid towards the debt, we'd still have... Five trillion dollar debt, six trillion dollar debt. I don't know if that's right, man. Like I've always heard, the rich just need to pay their fair share. Are you telling me that they that there's not enough in their fair share to do this? <laughs> that's that's right. There's not enough in the entire country to do this. <laughs> oh man. Um. So I, I don't. I mean, I don't know what the plan. I guess at that point, you may as well just completely suspend the debt ceiling. It has no meaning. Yeah. I mean, it's you're it's, never paying it. Yeah. Right. Uh, like the only answer and. And the idea that you can continue just never paying it and and nothing will ever come due is, I don't know, it's just a pipe dream. Yeah. Like, at some point, we're all going to pay for this. Oh, yeah. Like those. I, I, I should have written down the, because um, they, they actually have the debt broken down by every citizen. Oh, yeah. Like, how much every citizen owes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'd be um, interested to know what that is. Yeah, it was, it was some obscene number, like, sure. more than... You know, more than a lot of people make in a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crazy. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but I, like I want to say it was in like the two hundred to three hundred thousand oh, dollar yeah. per person range. Yeah. That's uh, unreal. We I guess gotta, we could do some quick math. We, we got to start saving now, man. Like that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's, that's the only way. The the irresponsibility to saddle the future with this kind of debt is um, is kind of hard to fathom. Yeah. Well, but but we're operating in an environment where people, and I, and I say people is, is the leaders and the people in charge, just don't think this stuff matters. Like yeah. the modern monetary theory, like idea is mm. is big out there. Like the idea that yeah, because it benefits them. Well, yeah, it, like obviously. it fits into what they want. But I think a lot of those guys actually believe it. Well, that might because be they haven't seen the collapse them theirself. From this, and mm -hmm. they think that you know this just works now. Like we yeah. can we can operate this way um, <laughs> when nothing else can. Yeah, like it's it's not. I mean, we know better, but like that, I, I think they they're buying into it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, imagine trying to operate a household or a business where you had accumulated more debt than you than the revenue you're then the revenue not just the profit the yeah. revenue 
<laughs> that you're able to generate. Yeah. Like, yeah. It doesn't it doesn't make sense, but the, the people you're talking about, for one, have never ran a business. Yeah, that's um, mostly true. And and for two, uh the argument I always hear when this comes up is well, we're not talking about running a business, we're talking about countries, blah, 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 blah. You know. Like countries don't have to adhere to economic principles. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is that Thomas Sowell quote, um, the the um the first principle of uh, economic, I can't, I'm going to mess it up. It's, uh, this, paraphrased okay. Thomas Sowell um, is that the, uh, the first principle of economics is scarcity. There's never enough of any good to satisfy all the demand for it. Yeah. And the first principle of, of uh, politics is to disregard the first principle of economics. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good one. I like uh, that guy. Yeah. I've been, um, I've been watching a lot of videos of, people reacting to Thomas Sowell videos. Oh, really? Yeah. I bet <laughs> those been, are interesting. It's been really entertaining, like people that have never been exposed to the these ideas, especially um, minorities, yeah. um, like groups of, of black guys uh, sitting around watching uh, Thomas Sowell talk about economic. Well, it's not even mostly about economics because he spent a lot of time talking about culture um, and yeah. race and civil rights and things like that. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting to, to watch them listen to him and react <laughs> yeah. to uh, to all the, I, I don't know what, the knowledge bombs, I guess. Yeah. Like the suddenly like, wow, I never... Th- yeah, <laughs> like the glass shattering moment. Never heard that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> never heard that before. Um, I, there was one guy I was, uh, I was watching and on YouTube and uh, he seems real sharp and this is all kind of, he's kind of apolitical and he's just been going through you know, some of these things like learning stuff and, um, and, uh, he was saying, man, like, does this guy, you know, does this guy have sources? Is he just like, is he just talking or does he have like research to back this up? (laughs) And luckily a lot of people had responded to him. I was like, I, I have the, and it's mostly like a lot of these discussions have been about the, um, black rednecks and white liberals, which I'm reading right now. Oh Yeah. And, um, and I'm, I'm past the, uh, the titular first essay, but there's like 50 pages of end notes in this book. <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> yeah. it's cited. <laughs> he's, yeah. He is a, a, an exceptional researcher. Yeah. Like there is tons of information. He's got sources. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's total aside. That's just yeah. thought that, that was, it's been fun. Yeah. I should have been doing things like, you know, reading anti-war and. <laughs> stuff but this, this is what i've been doing but, Tom, but you're digging some thomas soul right I'm now definitely digging some thomas soul man yeah. uh he's he's always fun to listen to highly yeah. recommend he's all over youtube look him up oh yeah and there's reaction videos now too so <laughs> i may have to just, check some of those can't go out. wrong uh all right do we want to move off the debt there's yeah. i mean there's I mean, not there's just not... really anything more to say about it it's yeah. it's um it's a disaster on its way yeah it's the, they can keep kicking the, on that can down the road, but eventually, yeah, they're gonna run out of road. <laughs> well, exactly, and and like I say, I mean, I think Trump's. I mean, I don't think Trump gets a lot right, but the mm-hmm. idea of just going on and peeling the band aid now ain't the worst idea. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and you know, talking about the mon- monetary thing, where like you can just like have these debts and stuff in perpetuity. Um, that kind of works when you're the reserve country or currency for the world, but. We're seeing that slip away and slip away. Like this, the the bills come and due for this stuff soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's you know, like I say, it's not it's not good. Well, that leads us reasonably well into China. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, the China stuff is there's uh, there's something happening. Yeah. Now, I don't know what, yeah. um, but it's it seems to me, and, and maybe I'm just reading too much into some things, but. Over the last few weeks, there's been announcements of uh, a bunch of people um, leaving the Biden administration, and they include uh, the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, uh, Wendy Sherman, um, who was a, this isn't related to China necessarily, but uh, she was openly pro-Iran nuclear deal. Okay. And was urging the administration to get back into the deal and so forth. Um, the head of the U S state department's office of China coordination, Rick waters yeah. also resigned. 
Um, the Undersecretary of Defense for Policy, Colin Call, I don't know if that's exactly the correct pronunciation, but whatever. Um, he was openly opposed to uh, sending F-16s to Ukraine. Yeah. And um, he uh, publicly expressed the the unlikelihood that China would invade Taiwan anytime soon. Yeah. Which is counter to the administration's the narrative. narrative. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they have appointed uh, to the joint as joint chiefs state uh, chair, the chair of the joint chiefs of staff, um, general Charles Q Brown jr. Who is a China hawk. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so you have all these people leaving the state department yeah. Some of them specifically related with China policy, um, yeah. like dealing specifically with China policy. And then you have this China hawk being a- appointed to, as chair of the Joint Chiefs. And then also, I think it was like a week ago, um, the Wall Street Journal put a couple of stories out about China that turned out to be completely false. Yeah. Um, one of them was that there was a, uh, a, a young um, Uyghur student who was held at um the airport in hong kong and disappeared oh yeah and uh this did come from amnesty international originally but the wall street journal ran with this story without making any attempt to verify any of this and uh there was another publication i can't remember the name and i didn't write it down um that did start making some phone calls to try and figure out what happened to this kid. Yeah. Um, and it turns out uh, that they spoke with his advisor um, at the school he was attending, the uh, university he was attending in South Korea. And his advisor said, oh, yeah, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> he's here and safe in South Korea. Yeah. And uh, he never left. He's <laughs> working on his degree. I met yeah. with him yesterday to advise him on his doctoral thesis. Yeah. So without any attempt to verify the information that was put out by Amnesty International, a Wall Street Journal ran the story about the terrible Chinese just killing the Uyghurs again. Yeah. Um, so there's some kind of word out that to start pumping out some propaganda. Yeah, well, and that's if, just the first one from the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. So then the, the second one um, was that the uh, Chinese envoy, uh, Li, Li Hui, I guess, okay. um, who's been traveling around Europe uh, uh, related to the Ukraine, like trying to make the deal, trying to um, get people to agree on some terms for a deal for a ceasefire between Ukraine and Russia and so forth. Like China's been pushing hard for this, right? Yeah. Um, So he's been traveling around European countries and then to Ukraine and then to Russia. And um, the Wall Street Journal put out a story saying that he was urging European leaders to assert their autonomy against the U S and to, um, to sign on for an immediate ceasefire in Ukraine, leaving Russia with all the captured territory. Oh, really? So the wall street journal put this article out and the Ukrainian foreign minister started contacting these European governments (laughs) (laughs) when he read this story and, and all of the European governments where Lee, we had been denied it said, no, that wasn't at all what he talked to us about. <laughs> I don't know where this came from. This is completely false. Yeah, it's just made up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, And that's the worst one, because that just, like, where did this information come from? And yeah. what kind of check was done to see if it was true before you published that kind of article? Like, it seems to yeah. be completely fabricated. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so. so there's your mainstream media here in the U.S., yeah. Always yeah. looking out for us. Legacy media. <laughs> legacy media? Is that what we're calling I, it now? I like legacy media. media. Okay. I don't know. Because it's it, it's what it is. Like, it's, you know, it's it, that used to be the way media was done, and it's mm. not anymore. Well, the, the way media used to be done was with a bunch of independent journalists all trying to track down stories and sell them. Yeah. Um, there was good investigation being done and so forth. So... I don't think that this is really legacy media. Yeah. I, I think that what we have now is a very different animal where you have um, these big corporations owning media companies, having people that are out there just trolling Twitter or whatever to try and find a story, not making any attempt to do any investigation or verify anything, just trying to get the story out first. Yeah. Right or wrong. Well, and it's it's all... 
I don't know. I mean, there's there's definitely a willingness to not take the big story mm-hmm. because it's going to upset the wrong people. Yeah. You know, um, where I don't know that it was always that way before. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. know. I mean, you go back at least through like Epstein. Like, I mean, that story was out there and was not taken. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how far back you go. Uh, I think a big part of it is um, just the the loss of the independent journalist. Yeah. And the competition that arose between journalists trying to to get that to story. get that scoop, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's some of that that still exists between the companies as a whole. I think, yeah, you know, Fox wants to get the exclusive before NBC does, or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but there's not the same kind of um, because those companies will remain no matter how frequently they're wrong. Yeah. Um, there's not the kind of, uh, dedication to making sure that your, your sources are solid before you put information out there. And there's the race to be first too. But whereas an independent journalist, um, once, uh, once their integrity was questioned, they were kind of done. They're over. Yeah, exactly. So they had to be sure that they had it. Yeah. Um, and that's gone. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have the same kind of liability for, for being wrong that you used to yeah. the individual liability. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that's a part of, it. but I think that that older version, that that's the legacy media. So I don't think that I'm comfortable calling what we have legacy legacy. Yeah. Um, besides I, I like the no agenda M five M thing. That's yeah. <laughs> so break down what, what does that what M five M mainstream? The it's mainstream media. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's I didn't know all, if it was an abbreviation it, for something or yeah, mainstream media. Mainstream it's it's media. the you know elite speak thing where instead of the S you have a five because okay. it's oh yeah 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 the same shape. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, um, you know, and you, you have the a three is a, essentially a backwards E, and like there's a whole bunch of those little okay. kind of things. Yeah. M um, five M, I like it. M five M. And and that's just your your big corporate media organizations. Yeah. That are dying. I really hope so. Yeah. I mean, they're not what they were. They're There's definitely no, not what they well, were. And the, the interesting thing is, is they don't have the influence that they had. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, over just the past decade, like they've lost so much of that. Yeah. Which um, is a good thing. I, I was talking to someone recently that was upset with me being confident in my sources Mm. in arguing. Actually, it was a foreign policy thing where I'm actually, where I'm really confident in my sources. Yeah. And, and I was like, well, yeah, but for years, like I've, you know, I've cultivated sources. I've, I've curated sources. Like I've cut out the people that have, have been wrong. Yeah. Um, with any kind of frequency at all. Yeah. Like more than once, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of factual presentations, like analysis yeah. is different. Like sometimes you're just wrong. Well, but, yeah, but no, but like just like cut and dry facts on the ground. Yeah. And I uh, say, so, you know, so, but over time, like my sources, and you've disagreed with me about the way things were, and I've turned out to be right over and over and over again. Yeah. Like repeatedly had the information that that turned out to be correct. Yeah. Um so my sources have a track record of being right. Yeah. And your sources are what? Like CNN and Fox? Yeah, right. <laughs> what TV told me. Yeah, and they have a really good track record of being wrong. Yeah, they do. Of being more concerned with the narrative than the truth. Of of pushing the agenda of whoever they're bought by. Yeah. You know. Um, so, I mean, choose your sources wisely. I can be convinced that I'm wrong. I, I'm, you know, I, I've been convinced that I'm wrong about many things in the past, but, but you're going to have to show me the data. Yeah. There's got to be something there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know, bring me the data. Like, uh, like Kennedy was saying on that thing with, uh, crystal ball Yeah, where he's like, okay, look, you know, you're saying that, uh, that I'm wrong about vaccines. Show me where I'm wrong. Yeah. Show me the study. (laughs) Oh, man. Like, 
I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But that'd either. be a that'd be a cool clip to play though. There was a lot to that, <laughs> like just. But it really kind of exposed like what you're dealing with with the corporate media, like that whole like just take my word for it, like you know that that type of attitude that. Yeah, like, she's not even this, corporate media though. Yeah, yeah, because that was on like a podcast or something. Yeah, that she it's does. um, but it was still that same mentality. It, it was that same mentality of expecting her viewers or listeners in this case mm-hmm. to just accept what she was saying as true and not listen to the other side. Yeah, like well, I mean, on the bright side, at least they played it. I mean, she kept cutting them off and not letting them him yeah. present his his side, but at least they played it. That was better than what NBC did. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Which Where is, they just like tell you what he said, yeah. or, or what they claim he what said. They cl- yeah, exactly. And not even letting you hear it. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's at least that. But I, I, you know, I am I am a little concerned about the direction these things are being pushed with China. I don't know. There's there's something you know, at play here. Mearsheimer, uh, again, John J. Mearsheimer is convinced that that. Um, China and the U S are on a collision course for a real conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, you know, just from the realist school is that, you know, now they're China is a near peer competitor or a peer competitor and that the U S won't tolerate a competitor and China won't tolerate being held down. And so, well, and it, it is dangerous because say what you will about Russia, but we've pushed Russia into China's arms. Yeah. You know, I mean, there there are clear lines being drawn mm-hmm. here for World War III. Like, yeah. I mean, the, the powers are being pushed together in a way that's in anybody looking at it, at it objectively should be able to see it. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know. I don't believe that the people in power don't see it. Like, I just don't think they don't have a. I just think they don't have a problem with it. Yeah. You well, know? and the idea goes that the the world order is dominated by the United States and to the benefit of the United States. Yeah. And that China is asserting itself to influence the world order in a way that's beneficial to itself. Yeah. And, you know, eventually it's going to come to blows. I, here we, you know, my (laughs) mom's going to get on to me about going down the, well, you know, the U S is worse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I meant to pull that quote about patriotism and nationalism. Uh, I might have to get you to talk for a minute while I run grab my notebook so I can. Pull <laughs> oh, that don't out do that. I think it's. Um, I think that it it's just interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, it, honestly, I've read it before on the podcast, so maybe it's not worthwhile. But, um, I do want to point out that while the China is militarizing some islands in the South China Sea, yeah. It is also the South China Sea. Yeah. I mean, it, it may be unfair for China to look at the South China Sea as its own private lake or whatever, but it's also unfair for the U.S. to look at the Pacific Ocean as its own private lake, which is kind of <laughs> how it goes. Yeah. And, um, you know, the U.S. has bases in like 70 or 80 countries, yeah, something like that, uh, and hundreds of overseas bases. As far as I know... Outside of these islands that, uh, you know, they're they're differing claims on the islands. So yeah, you could maybe call some of these little island bases overseas bases. But leaving yeah. those out, yeah. I think that China only has one overseas base, and it's in Djibouti. Oh, really? So they're in Djibouti. Mm-hmm. That's over. But there. I think that's, that's it. That's over there where the drones fly fly out from, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, maybe that's why. Yeah. Um, well, that's when you said that. I was like, well, maybe there's a connection there. Like, <laughs> might be. I'm yeah. not sure. I think it's actually about economic. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, China's issues, invested so. heavily in like South Africa, though. Yeah. As I understand it. Yeah. At least uh, they're invested heavily all over Africa. Yeah. Um, China has taken more of an economic. Well, I guess the U.S. used to. Yeah. Uh, but well, China they've taken has the play taken from on, our old playbook. Yeah, China has taken on the role of uh, dominating the world through economics. Yeah. Um, but the U.S. still controls the systems. Yeah. Which is partly why Mearsheimer thinks that we're on a collision course. Yeah. Yeah, because something has to come to a head at some point. Yeah. 
especially if we're not willing to tolerate a powerful China. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not willing to tolerate a powerful anybody else. Well, that's just it. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know why it matters so much to us. Like this is the the wealthier, you know, it's the rising tide thing. Yeah. Um, you know, the wealthier the wealthier the world becomes, the better it is for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, but you see that's and unfortunately, like if the people of this country like controlled this country, mm-hmm. that'd be the direction we'd head. But that's just not how how things work. The yeah. wealthy and the the political class are the ones who who are pulling all the levers. And that's not necessary the the world becoming a better place to live isn't what's in their agenda. Like yeah. I mean, they don't care. Like I mean, they it, like let these people live in poverty. Like it doesn't matter to them as long as it's going to benefit them in the longer, the the wealthy in the long run. Well, um, you are doing an excellent job in this podcast of setting me up for transitions. <laughs> I'm just nailing it tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I was talking to, uh, to somebody recently and they were saying that, um, that this is just bad times. Yeah. That things are just falling apart. Yeah. The world's falling apart. Yeah. Going down, well, down, down. Humanity. And you, and you hear this a lot. Like this isn't, I know you've had this conversation recently, but I have this conversation with folks all the time. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a mind thing. And, and there is something to be said about, like, it seems like we're in a decline here. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was making the argument to them that, um, that the trajectory of human history has always been up, up, up. That yeah. there were maybe like little slight dips. I would say that there were, you know, dips around World War One, World II, World War Two. Yeah. Um, and we're but, in a dip now with COVID. I mean, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, we may not be in it like immediately, but mm-hmm. there was definitely a dip during COVID. I mean. Uh, violent crime kind of went like people yeah. were locked in their houses. Like there was like, I mean, if you're going to look at it like on a scale and you were mm-hmm. looking at where the dips were at, yeah, like 2020 would be a dip. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's probably true. I mean, but it's, it's small. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not to the, to the level of world war one, world war two, mm. but it's there though. Yeah. But I, I was making the argument that on the whole, the trajectory has been up. up. Yeah. Um, that our lives are improved. We live longer. We're healthier. We're wealthier. Yeah. Um, that, you know, that on the whole, we just continue to improve as a species. Yeah. And, but then I was thinking about it more, um, after I talked to them and like trying to figure out, okay, if you're like looking around you and you see this in your day to day life, what are you actually witnessing? Depends on where you live. If you live in well, San Francisco, <laughs> like yeah, I mean, you're looking at poop on the streets. Talking about in the United States, and I, I thought, yeah. I think that what they're seeing is the collapse of a global empire. Yeah, no, that this is what's happening now. That you know, like other empires that have collapsed, we're in a we're in a phase here in the United States where things look like they're getting worse because they are. Yeah, uh, because we've overextended. We've spent too much. We, you know, we're, we're, we've made enemies all over. The, the world is starting to kind of revolt against us. Yeah. Um, like China and other, and the BRICS nations trying to create their own, um, their, their own economic group, uh, to get outside of the U S influence and, and so forth, you know, all of these things. And, well, and, and as the, go ahead. There's just something to be said about social media playing into that too, where you, you, whatever the big violence of the day is on the screen that you're in front of. Yeah. A, like most of your, a lot of your day, at least for a lot of people. I don't like, think this person's on social media. Yeah. Really, I mean, they may I, not be, but know. I'm just saying in general, like that, yeah. that drives a lot of, it drives a lot of what I hear when I hear people talking about, well, the, you know, did you hear about this? Did you hear about mm-hmm. this? Did you hear about this? Well, like those things were always going on before. 
you just didn't have immediate access to the information. <laughs> yeah, and and then there's what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago where the algorithm has learned that it gets a quicker response with negative stimuli. Exactly. <clears throat> Excuse so, me. I mean, at least in some respects, there's that factor is out there. Yeah, that's true. But as the the U.S. global empire moves into collapse, you have the the power centers tightening their grip. Yeah. Well, and I think that's where a lot of this comes from. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that, especially talking about your M5M media, yeah. um, like they're losing power too. And that that is a factor in all of that. Like yeah. those like when I say the reason I like legacy media is is because it's not what it used to be. Like yeah. it's not it's it doesn't have the influence. And there's something about trying to hang on to that mm -hmm. that well, I don't know. They're really the power center, though. I, well, they're not anymore. They're, they're absolutely they're a mouthpiece not. for it. That's yeah, that I can agree with. But I, I really, what I'm talking about is the um, the political and economic elite classes. Yeah, um, that are are seeing things start to slip away, and they're really trying to tighten their grip and make sure that it doesn't. And I, I think one of the best examples of that is the. Um, the tightening of restrictions about expressing alternative viewpoints counter to the mainstream narrative, the, you know, the, the greater degree of censorship yeah, is a part of that because they don't want those ideas to be out there to people to, so that people can see, become more aware. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's plenty of talk of misinformation and disinformation, but there's always been misinformation, disinformation. That's not, that's nothing new. And it's yeah. not, it's not more prevalent now than it's ever been. I don't well, think it's well, probably more accessible, but I don't think it's more prevalent now. It's, and, at, it's more accessible and people just seem to gravitate to it more, I think, than what Misinformation and disinformation? I think so. You think so? I don't think so. I think, be, well, I mean, if that's true, my guess is it's because they, they, aren't really being taught critical skills in. I don't know. I'm just going to tell you straight history. right here, right now. Like I know some very intelligent, smart people that are flat earthers. And yeah, <laughs> well, like, they're, they're, the, the, <laughs> the thing about conspiracies that I've noticed is that once you become certain of one, yeah, that all the rest of them seem a lot more plausible all of a sudden. Yeah. And I'm susceptible to that. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I mean, not, there are conspiracy, I, I say conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. I feel like the conspiracy theories I would believe in are pretty well based in fact. Yeah. <laughs> but there are, there's plenty of things that I think would be, that I don't think is a conspiracy theory that when I talk to everyday people, they're like, whoa, you're kind of getting a little kooky here. How you do know? flat earthers explain the horizon? <laughs> you got me, man. Okay. I just... <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I mean, I, I like. I remember at one point looking at some of this and thinking, "Wow, they've really well, worked you, hard." You just to have to, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's so. I don't know if you heard about the sonic boom that was here locally recently. No, nah. um, you may not have heard it. I didn't hear it at my house either, but it was. It happened. Like there was a huge sonic boom, and um, some of the people I <laughs> know that are of the flat Earth persuasion. Because what the sonic boom was was re-entry for a SpaceX um, ship or okay. something, um, and that's what it was. Um, but the the people that I know that are in the flat Earth camp, where I don't know what that noise was, but it wasn't what they're saying it was. Yeah. And, I, and that's the kind of the point: what they're saying it was. Yeah, you know, I, I it blows my mind that you could possibly be referring to this in the plural like the idea that you would know more than one flat earther is just Dude, amazing I, i'm telling me. you like it's out there man like people and i'm not talking about like ignorant people like these are not these are college they're more educated than i am like i mean <laughs> well uh, just because they've done more years of school doesn't necessarily mean i 100 percent 100 percent agree <laughs> like i mean i consider uh, myself to be an intelligent person that didn't graduate from college so i'm just saying like oh uh, look at what all we do for this like that's there's yeah. education in that too but <laughs> all right sorry I, we're really, about really, we're on a yeah, rabbit hole yeah, here i'm just, just saying it just blows my mind yeah um and it's not like there I'm, are probably people that listen to this podcast that are flat earthers. 
Well, I would okay. I would tell you to I would tell them to email Mike. Yeah, Michael <laughs> at the Liberty Mike. I, I will give you plenty of evidence that you're wrong. Oh, um, but that's now, that's that's to, the thing. To use Spencer's line, I'm not saying you can't believe that. I'm just saying you're wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no. Yeah, but but your point's valid. That once- somebody explained to me a horizon. Yeah, you you explain to me your horizon from a flat Earth perspective. I'm really curious about that. Yeah, like generally curious, right? Yeah, yeah. I I, right. I, I gotta, I, man, I gotta see what kind of hoops are being jumped through to to get to that to do that. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, um, back to the point here, though. Yeah. The you know the the political and economic elites are um, tightening their grip, but and at the same time, like all this wealth that's been generated over the decades and centuries in this country um, has led to a level of decadence. Like you see a lot of decadence in fall in the fall of empires. Yeah. Um, And uh, with that decadence comes a moral degradation. Yeah. And, and then the, the, you know, the poverty is then reinforced because of the the rise in corruption as a result also of that moral degradation. Yeah. And and just I guess the lack of empathy from the people that have the power. Yeah. They're only interested at at some point in hanging on. They they see it slipping away. They tighten the grip. They're not interested in anybody else. They lose any kind of empathy or sympathy for others. Yeah. Um they're increasingly corrupt trying to hang on to that wealth and power that's slipping away. Yeah. Uh, and that, it just kind of slides down yeah. to everybody. Yeah. Until know. the barbarians are at the gates. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and then they form a more enlightened empire than you had. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> to tell you, I saw that movie finally. Yeah. Um, like the only thing else that I had to talk about really was just, uh, I don't know, I guess I, I'm just really tired of the animosity between the left and the right in this country. And I, I think that the focus is wrong. I think that the whole left-right continuum, like this way of viewing politics, um, isn't valuable. Well, and it goes back to the fall of the empire, though, because it's, it's, it's all of that is a cling to power. Yeah. It's it's part of the same thing. I guess that that's true at least to some degree. I I mean I think to, you know to me the more important continuum to watch is the authoritarian versus liberty. Yeah. You know, freedom versus authoritarianism. Well, and honest to goodness, if we had two honest parties, mm-hmm. like that's where we're at is is one party would be the freedom party and the other party would be the party of not, not, not saying that the other party would necessarily be this like authoritarian party, even though I would view it that way, but a big government party, a big, a a party that was okay with giving up Liberty for safety. Yeah. Because that's really where the divide in this country is at. Like the Mm -hmm. the divide is between people like me or you who prioritize freedom over everything, which I think you'd agree with that's where we're at. Yeah. Um, and people who are like, no, we need to be willing to give up some of that freedom for, for safety. Mm-hmm. Um, which as much as I disagree with that opinion, I'm fine with people having it. Yeah. I understand the perspective. Yeah. Um, but, I just think that it doesn't, and it does, you don't, you don't actually achieve that goal. But the but that's where the divide's at. Like that's that's where those lines are. Is and if we had two honest parties, those would be the two parties. Like that's a two party system that I would at least understand. Well, the, the, the two party two- system that we have is two authoritarian parties, and one of them wants to provide you security from some, uh, you know, nebulous outside force, and the other one wants you to pro- wants to be able to provide you security from yourself. Yeah. Neither of which I'm okay with. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's not like I can support either of those ways of thought, and that is you're absolutely correct. Like that is what we're what we have right now. Well, what I've been seeing, like I've been trying to examine it. I was thinking about this last week, um, staying at a friend's house, and I, I couldn't sleep, and so I was thinking about this particular issue, and and thinking about you know 
that the 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 important measurement is whether is the freedom versus authoritarianism thing. Yeah. And and I was realizing that both sides are are absolutely authoritarian and the more authoritarian group is whichever one has the momentum. Well, it's whichever one, yeah, like you say, whichever one's in power. But momentum's well, a good way to put it. That's I think it's more about momentum than power because because the Republicans were in power with Trump, but the left still had the momentum. I'd agree with that. And and the left was more authoritarian during that period and still yeah. is. Like from Obama through Biden, yeah. the left has had the momentum. Yeah. And um has been the more authoritarian party, but when you go back to the you know the um W Bush era, yeah. It was the Republicans that were the more authoritarian group because they had they had the momentum then. They had yeah. taken over from Clinton, um, you know, they had the um uh, you know, the war president thing they had, you know, yeah. there was a lot of, of that. And, and they were incredibly authoritarian that yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. administration, which is, is kind of, it puts us libertarians in a strange position mm -hmm. because like all the way through like the Bush era, like I wasn't a Democrat, but I supported more Democrats than I did Republicans. Yeah. I mean, Ron Paul being the exception, mm -hmm. um, like I, the Democrats just seemed like the better party at that time, but yeah. they, but they weren't in power. And like you like you mm -hmm. say, they didn't have the momentum behind them. Yeah. Um, and now it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, like I'm neither, like I don't support either, but I find myself siding with Republicans more now than I did now than I would Democrats. But yeah. that may be getting ready to change too with some of the stuff that some of the people that are on mm -hmm. the horizon in the Democrat party. Well, I mean, I hope so. I, I, the last, it would be nice to have a good left again. You know, the, the last people that I've supported, um, you know, that were in one of the two major parties were, were, uh, um, Tulsi I know, Gabbard. I, was I know Tulsi Gabbard's on the list. Yeah. yeah. I, Tulsi Gabbard. Um, yeah. and I, I think this time around in a lot of ways, uh, RFKJ. Yeah. Well, that's that's the person I was alluding to is I I don't know how all of this is going to play out, but mm -hmm. I think he has that there's a chance that he may like really shift the Democrat Party. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's an outside chance. I'm, it's not one. If I was a betting man, I wouldn't bet on it. But it is there. Um, there's definitely an opening there that I think he's trying to exploit. Yeah, I, he's good on a lot of things that really matter to me. I mean, that was certainly my thing with Tulsi. Like, even her war stance I wasn't entirely on board with, but she But it was, was the best on the stage. Yeah, as uh, Scott Horton would say, she was the least worst. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, and mm. and I guess I'm not, like... There's a, there's a wide variation in Republicans, but they're not... I mean, I mean that was the only reason that I um, that I spoke highly of Trump in the, at the beginning was yeah. that I thought at least maybe this guy will put it into all the overseas conflicts that we don't need to be involved in. Yeah, he didn't. No, he didn't. He failed miserably <laughs> at that. Yeah. Um, which I, in retrospect, I guess I should have seen, but and in some ways, and I, I, but I never supported him, so I, I guess it didn't really matter whether yeah. I could foresee it or not. But it's not like at least you were I was looking. At, yeah, <laughs> I was like trying to find that silver lining when he got elected, and like, well, maybe this will be the end of that. Well, and, and I certainly supported him over Hillary Clinton, but I didn't obviously. support either one of them. Yeah, I mean, I just and would have preferred way, Trump be in there than Hillary Clinton because I'm I'm real confident about the state of war after oh, a, a yeah. Hillary Clinton election. Like she has well, track record. I don't know if you've heard my conspiracy theory on this, but I think the election of 2016, there was a split. There were there was one there was one dimension that went the Hillary Clinton direction, and there was one dimension that went the Trump direction, and the Hillary Clinton ex one de doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> World War Three happened and they're gone. <laughs> And so we're the dimension that's left. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm following you now. Like, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I was so like, I'm yeah. just saying that's the reason things have been mm -hmm. so crazy ever since 2016. Like within a multiverse theory. Yeah. We're, we're multiverse like, okay. theorying here. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> like, so I see. I see. All I'm saying that. So, no, I mean, I didn't support Trump, but I try to do this with all presidents. Like when mm. they're elected, whatever their thing was, because most of the time there's something that they have that I agreed with. Yeah. And, 
uh, I try to, well, at least maybe we'll get that. Yeah. Of course, we never do, by the way. <laughs> like, we never do. But I at least like to go in with some optimism. Like, well, maybe we'll get, maybe something good will come from this. Yeah. Um, but, like I say, yeah. at, least, at, least, at least our dimension is still out there. That's true. We're, we're the lucky ones. <laughs> yes. Somehow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the... So. The least worst, <laughs> the, least. <laughs> the, the, the least worst on the luck. Exactly. Um, ah, gosh. So. Okay. Well, um, you want to wrap up there? Yeah, that's, that's really all I got, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything else. Hopefully, I can do a little more. Um, spend a little more time with some things for next week. Although I think this yeah. was fine. I like. I actually like the. Uh, I like the kind of philosophy of government discussions. Anyway. Oh yeah. I mean that's um, going back to our roots. And and the truth is that I think that the I don't know if this was our our idea at the beginning, but it seems to me that the that one of the the major values of this podcast is providing people with a different way of looking at these things and and thinking about them. Oh, it's absolutely when we started it. Like that was one of our big goals is to like, we may not change your mind, but at Mm -hmm. least start looking at some of these things outside the, the normal paradigm. Yeah. Like at least like start thinking about government different, like start thinking about politics different. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I mean, I may not convince you to be a libertarian in one podcast, Mm -hmm. but if, if I can at least convince you to broaden your horizons on how you think of things, I feel like I've won. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so hopefully we're, we're at least reaching some of those goals. (laughs) Well, and I hope we do even more of that next week. Um, in the meantime, uh, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or, and, or Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. You can email me, Michael at the Liberty Mike. I am really curious. Man, I hope you get some emails. I do dude. too. I <laughs> like, really I, wanna I really wanna hear the flat earthers explanation for how ships appear over a horizon. Yeah. Yeah. Or the I'm, sun or anything. Anyway. <laughs> um Oh, wow. Well, I just, I, I can't even fathom. So like, I may be checking in with you this week to see if you got yeah. any emails. I, I want you- graphics too. Like, <laughs> send me graphics. <laughs> oh, um, otherwise I don't think that I can possibly understand. You're going to definitely have to show me a little bit. <laughs> right. <clears throat> oh. Anyway. Um, so, uh, we plan to be ma- back, uh, next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.